tutorials that just show you what buttons you should click. Uh, and I'll be trying to explain um, how this stuff works a little and uh, how to avoid frustration. Now I did this neat little effect which was called Bonsai City. A couple of users were asking about a tutorial on this. So this is basically it. The most important thing is I'm giving you free project files where you have uh, tracking data for both After Effects and 3D Max. If you get frustrated you also get this stock footage and uh, perfect track for it. Uh, it's the same track I used in this effect. I did it in Boujou and it doesn't slip a pixel. Okay it slips maybe one pixel. Well every 300 frames. Whatever. So this is uh, pretty much it so we're gonna start with some tracking strategies now in tracking you have to realize that you do it for visual effects so if you want to track spontaneous footage and uh, that's not the best thing to do and mostly it won't work uh, so what i try to say is pick your shots i mean you know you're gonna be doing visual effects there so it's uh, up to you to pick those shots carefully now in this particular case this is how the shot looks like it's a violent handheld shot now of course i was trying to uh, be as steady as possible but yeah this is shot on ipad which doesn't have any internal stabilizing system or anything like that and uh, it's a very long shot okay so and uh, it actually changes the whole geometry throughout it so you start in this position then you make a half circle now the only reason tracking this was possible it's it's a pretty nice contrasting shot okay where you have light and shadows and hard shadows so and especially these lines they are actually the perfect representation of the scene geometry which is was then useful to me in Buju. okay so i knew that this is the x axis this is the z axis or y in case of Buju because 3d max uses different coordinate system so that's it okay way it looked like in Bujou was like this there you track the shot you end up with these points you add a test object which is usually messed up very wrong so then what you need to do is uh, do geometry so i went i went back here and just picked like for example this point and this point and since i have this line this uh, line on the concrete I knew exactly and uh, I'm staying within the boundaries of the x-axis so I connected these two points as an x-axis then this one and maybe this one as a y-axis and then set this one as an origin and uh, yeah, exported it try it how it acts in 3d max and uh, did it like 20 times because yeah that's true because uh, before you get this perfect geometry of the scene you really have to try it like 20 times before you're satisfied and the only way to test it is actually go into 3d max i'll show you now you don't have to do this of course since you've got project files which i encourage you to use only when you get frustrated in tracking the shots so you have a backup which you know is a perfect track so after you get desperate and you won't be able to get the perfect result just do it just use it okay whatever it's your problem if you use it from the beginning but this is the whole purpose of this is to teach something so okay so I slammed yeah, maybe you didn't notice that I took the max script file and slammed it in and it contains the camera data and as you can see the geometry what I was looking for to have this line perfectly I mean on the horizon exactly how it is in the scene what you need to do then is export a JPEG sequence out of this you do it by control M sorry I got a little cold so sorry for this then you got JPEG sequence okay choose directory wow shoop. there you go and then you gotta you need to import it as a viewport background so configure viewport background alt B there you click use files if you use max 13 this is max 13 other versions of max works just like just like this then you just load your image make sure you load it as a sequence and here you got animate background ticket and there you go and this is what I was talking about yeah the geometry was I did it really like 20 times before this this was perfect okay so 
Yeah, I was proud. Yeah, just kidding. It's just a track, okay? So, yeah. but hey, the important thing is that the geometry is correct. Maybe, yeah, maybe z axis could have been a little better, but it's about compromise because if you uh, align perfectly z axis, then you mess up x axis. So, important thing is to have it correctly uh, in the boundaries of the horizon. So if I put a box, as you can see, it it really acts properly. I can always rotate the box. Now the most important thing to do if you're trying to put a city here with a metropolitan, uh, don't move it underneath the plane, okay? Yeah. Although this is max and it may act properly, as you can see, it, started, it starts to slip here. As you can see, yeah. If you watch this line, yeah, and it will end up somewhere here. So that's why it needs to it needs to stay perfectly on the plane, because every time you try to put objects on the ground uh, with the tracking technique, that's the most painful thing to do. Actually, if you want objects floating midair, you don't have to be precise at all. You just use foundry camera tracker, and there you go. Okay, and you can easily live with a reprojection error of two or three pixels very easily. But if you want to put objects on the ground, you have to be somewhere in like 0 0.2, 0 0.1 reprojection error, which uh, Foundry Camera Tracker is well. I don't think it's such a good tracker, but whatever. That's because, of course, I obtained Bushu license, but. I use it for my work, so that's a different story. I'm not a hobbyist, so if you're a hobbyist, of course, you don't want to buy software that is $10,000. So, yeah, okay, so leave it on the ground, then create a plane where your shadows is going to be cast. Go to perspective view. Of course, you can remove these points, yeah, they are just annoying, but whatever, I don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, I'll make a plane, then material, hit M create a quick matte shadow material or matte shadow reflection whatever I'm in yeah I'm in mental ray mode so. matte shadow reflection so then go to object properties on tick visible to reflection reflection and uh, then add some lights now in original example I did this uh, hard shadow thing in post production. I duplicated the layer, masked this part out, and cranked the curves adjustment down. And uh, in this example, in this example, I actually matched the scene lighting a little better. It was physically correct. So the well, way I did this was created a simple spotlight. And then just, yeah, if I rotate the box, go back to camera one. Okay, we got some representation. Then just move, just move the hotspot and beam like this. And that way, half of the box will stay in the shadows area. Of course, it depends where you want your shadows to be cast. So, yeah, this so something like this. That way, half of the box stay uh, in the dark area. You can play with intensity. You can play with the hotspot and beam by making a larger fall-off field. Yeah, this is fun actually. This is this is very pleasing work. So you can do it like that. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. It's dark where it's supposed to be dark. So this is the example of tra shot that it's impossible to track. Okay, this is me riding a bike. Back in the days when I used to be a wild man. So as you can see, this is just impossible shot to track. Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, well, you have plenty of contrasting points, but since this part is obscuring the view it's just an example also I don't remember yeah this is also impossible shot to track 
since you got so many reflections. Now it will recreate a camera, of course, good enough to put objects midair, but not good enough to put a ship or a spaceship here. Well, spaceship, yes, but ship, no. So this is it. I hope I didn't forget something. Now, way, way, yeah, way you have to work with the After Effects file. That's gonna work like this. You got this bonsai bonsai city Maya scene. Slam it in here, and first you have to do a couple of steps to revert. You know, yeah, okay. It will export like a trillion null objects because I forgot to flag just a couple of them for export, but you just say hey, delete them. Don't be lazy and don't take anything for granted. Like uh, everything served on a golden plate. Okay. Okay, then you need to alt click on zoom point. Uh, alt click on zoom star 111. Since it screws up aspect ratio, it's the problem of After Effects and not the track. Okay, then you have to revert it back to original aspect ratio, pixel aspect ratio, and then it screws up. It also screws up resolution. So if you put it like this, then I can slam the footage in. And there you go, it's there and it works. Then we can test the track in After Effects, how it works. Slam TXT and uh, make it a 3D layer. Open up the position of one of the nulls, position of the text. Uh, you can connect it through some expressions, but just uh, simply type it in. Important is the Z1. It means it stays on, stays on the ground. So you shouldn't, you know, wiggle, you shouldn't shift it like this. It should stay exactly at this location to make sure it will stick to the null. Then you just uh, make it smaller. W or R for rotation. Rotate it 90 degrees. And then you just move it somewhere here. Okay, and as you can see, yeah, it's a perfect track. It just sticks there. Duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees like this. Generate fill, color correction. My brain is kind of not working today. Well, it's not working any day, so whatever. And there you go, you got great tracking data for After Effects 2. Now, the problem I encounter, I encounter with Element 3D anytime I use these scene files, and uh, it's the prime reason I don't like to use Element at all. And maybe I'm just stupid and didn't figure it out, but I'll show you what Element does. And uh, if you can talk to Andrew Kramer, just point this out. Because uh, I think it's a problem, but whatever. And that's why I stopped, use it, stopped uh, using Element 3D. Okay. Well, it worked for some shots. I mean, I remember doing this uh, VFX with the, the cabbage, where I actually used exactly the same technique. I, tr I exported Maya scene for... Uh, in Buju for After Effects. I'll show you what I mean if I find it. Yeah, here. It was on this. Sorry, it was on this video. Okay, I I had two ground planes. I tracked it, and this is done in After Effects. This is 3D Max, of course. But uh, yeah, the track here. It's a perfect track, and uh, it was on a shiny table. These are markers, of course, but it worked in this case. Strangely enough, this is Element 3D cabbage, so whatever. Uh, well, I should just continue proving my point. 44.8, 13, 5, and 0.1. The problem I had with Element 3D just uh, nearly always. 
here's the apple and uh, it will just float midair and that's the problem as you can see it starts here ends up here within first 70 frames and uh, although if we test the track test text just sticks there of course it's very weird because um, the apple acts perfectly correct in the scene okay but it slowly moves somewhere you know it's just uh, and uh, I tried uh, I tried thousands of things I spent actually three hours trying to somehow figure this out and fixed it uh, one solution I had was make it a plain repli replicator with 50 apples and then use world transform shift the rotation since the way this model imports is uh, one thing one more thing I can shift the anchor point to model bottom yeah and it's uh, it's even worse so from model maybe nope so whatever try it yourself maybe you're lucky I didn't figure this out so you got a challenge and if you come up with a solution you earn your channel to be featured on mine and you earn some free model maybe whatever because uh, I want the solution as well so if you're smarter smarter than me or maybe more lucky I don't know whatever so this is I think all it's uh, important thing is you got project files you got camera data so you can play with it so come up with some interesting ideas and be free to slam video response with the effect you made maybe yeah put a motorcycle there put a car there uh, we got free models as well on our channel so for example this Ferrari Enzo so if you hit me up with a private message I can give you this password to this model and you just slam Ferrari Enzo and match the scene lighting as well as you can and just uh, hey play with it and uh, use After Effects if you figure out the element problem whatever you like so this has been Johnny Mnemonic and uh, bye